What's up everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. So today we have a Demon Slayer drawing tutorial for you. It's Tanjiro, I know I've done Tanjiro already, but I wanted to do a Dance of the Fire God one. A cool scene where he uses the flames instead of the water. So, uh, yeah, so we're close up on his face and it's a three quarter pose. So that means uh, this eye is turned away. So his head is sort of turned slightly to the left. So we have one eye that's a bit smaller and one eye that's pretty big. <coughs> so, we'll start with the big eye, I guess. So so we're gonna place, well, I'm, I'm actually, his eyes are, are big and sort of, you know, he's angry and stuff and he's staring really hard. So we're gonna start with just his iris. We're gonna start with a circle. Might make things a bit easier. So we're just gonna start with this circle. It could be a kind of a, angular circle because demon slayer sometimes does that or you could just do a normal circle like so so it's up up to you you could do normal angles i had i mixed it up just to give an example and then inside there his pupil is a white diamond so we go that way and that way And then of course he has a sort of darker black section just starting about here and it kind of goes around the bottom of that diamond like so into there and this is all dark black in here and then the bottom part is like purple and pink sort of shaded in. And these might have a couple of lines and stuff coming at the bottom of them, just there. Right, so then on, we have his eyebrow. So let's see, top of his eye. So coming up here, we're gonna just come across the top of his eyebrow, just like so. And then it sort of comes down this other side here, like that. And then we're gonna thicken that up. So we're just gonna make it a bit thicker and add a spike, an extra spike just down here. So we're just thickening that up, bringing it across, down like so. Right, so then his bottom eyelid is just under that and it's like a V, so it's just comes down like so, comes back up, and you might thicken this up as well, like so. Just make this a bit pointier, maybe this one as well, quite pointy sort of eyelashes. So he's got uh, an eyebrow. So just here, diagonal down. Remember if I go too fast, hit your pause button and I would recommend a pencil for these. So then the eyebrow is gonna curve up this way. Boom. When we get to here, we're gonna go straight off this way as well. Then we just have to thicken up this end. So. This goes a bit longer and then thicken up this part. So that's what we got so far. So now his other eye, right, is up. It's diagonal up, right? So 
up this way. So the top line of his, the top of his iris is up above. It's about in line with the middle of his eyebrow just here. So we'll draw that circle just first. Kind of a ellipse, smaller circle than this one. Because remember, it's further away. So when things are further away, they get slightly smaller, especially in a three quarter pose. So this is where his other iris is, right across from his eyebrow here. And then in there, we have that diamond pupil of his as well. So we have one here. Like so. And then that dark section going around that pupil just here. To here. And then that's dark black inside. And then we can do his top eyelid. So it, it's going diagonal up this way. So we're gonna, that's the line for his eyes now. We're going diagonal. So that means his eyelash line will have to go diagonal as well. So we're gonna start right down here. So pretty much across from his eyelashes and we're gonna go up this way then. And then it curves down to a spike down here. And we just thicken it up. Touches the top of his iris right there. Comes down maybe a little spike here as well. Okay. So we're going diagonal now with this one because his face is turned away. So what we can see of his bottom eyelid is just a sort of curved line here coming down underneath his eye, just there. Okay. And then his eyebrow, just here. And then it's gonna tick up. So it's gonna go up this way real, sharp angle right up and when we get to here it'll go off to the right like this one except much smaller like that because this side of his face is turned away so if you look at my hand if i turn away my thumb it'll disappear eventually but if i have it on this side and i turn it away gets smaller, 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 and disappears. So it's like that on the eye. It's getting smaller. If he turned his head completely, it'd get smaller and smaller until it disappeared. <clears throat> so that's what we're going for. So we're just thickening up this bottom part of the eyebrow up to there. So then we gotta add some, just some stress lines and some eyelid lines, cause he's, you know, he's been fighting, so there, a couple down here, maybe on the inside, <clears throat> an eyelid line just coming out here and on top too, so coming out say here. Like so, and some underneath here too. So then his nose, right, so he's, he's, his face is all scrunched up. He's grimacing, biting his teeth. So we're gonna go for his frown lines first. So we're gonna go, say a line in here, diagonal that way, back in like so. Maybe one going back this way and a couple of 
scratch marks or something up here. There's another frown line just here along his eyebrow. So we're gonna go down like so. Comes around right at his eyelashes and comes down into there. Like so. And then his nose is down from that. So it's just a pointy, real pointy nose. So we do a line there first for the bridge of it. And we bring it around the bottom down like that. And then his nostril is just over here, just underneath, say this, just underneath the gap between the eyebrow and this frown line. So come down, it's just about here. And it's just a little dot like that. And then, so there's some hatching on his nose. Just gives his, the bridge of his nose a little bit of definition, like so. And then his mouth, so he's, he's grimacing, he's biting his teeth. So we'll do the top line first. So we'll go across, like so. Like his mouth is closed. Pretty close to his nose as well, just a little gap. And now this is gonna bump around, so it curves around like so, first. And then it's gonna come underneath, like so. And remember as well, because the face is three quarter, three quarter pose means it's turned away. So this side has to be smaller. So we'll bump, small bump, small bump here. And then we'll bring the bottom lip up to that. So three quarter pose is tricky, I know, but try your best. Once you can do three quarter pose, the normal poses are easy. Profile and straightforward pose, and then three quarters is, one of, is the trickiest one to get a handle of. So lines for teeth in there. Just in there. Maybe a dark shadow just in for a gap, maybe there. Okay, so we'll do the line for his head. So coming down just from where his eyebrow is, we're gonna go straight down this way. Might curve in a little bit and then come out to his cheek, just there. And then when we get to his cheek, we're gonna bring it in. His cheek is just across from his nose. And this is gonna come down for the side of his jaw, for his face, just there, like so. Now this stops here because his, his arm is holding his sword, it's going across his face. So his arm is coming across his chin, so we can't see his chin. So we don't go further than his mouth with the side of his face there, with this kind of L shape. Okay, stop down here. We're gonna go back up and we're gonna do his hair. So we'll do his forehead now. So his forehead bends around and goes in like so. Okay. And then we're gonna do a zigzag line across his hairline. So it's gonna go zigzag like so. Okay, and we're gonna go across like this and then when we get to about the middle line so it's about here see just above his eyebrow just here they go they spike this way on this side and then they're gonna spike this way on this side so we're gonna go the other way down his face like that when we get we get to here we're gonna curve a spike of hair that's hanging down on his cheek so it's gonna come down to here First, and then this will spike back, like so. 
and then we have some more spikes. So we have a little spike here. Like that. And then we can see his earring and his ear just in here. So the earring, so it's just at the bottom of this spike. So we have a circle here. And then a straight line going this way, like that. And then a rectangle for his earring. So we have a line there and a line here. And then we join those together. It's that rising sun earring that he wears. And you could do the patterns inside there if you wanted. Or you could do it later, you can come back if you want to finish other things, but he's got that rising sun. With the rays of sunshine coming out of it. Like so. And then we can see his ear just in here. So curves around like that. And some lines for his inner ear in there. Just coming around, bumping around like so. And then we can finish the rest of his hair. So we have another spike down here. Coming up. Another one going this way. And then this one go up this way. There, spikes up like so, spiking up, and we're going to bring it around all the way to this side of his head. So, yeah, let's just let's go for it. Good. Here we're going all the way up to, right to the top of my page. So we have top hair spike is like right up there, and then this goes to here. Back up this way. And now, once we get to the top of his head, they're kind of wavy. They kind of grow out of his head in a wavy pattern. So this one goes there. And then this one spikes up pretty big. Come waves down right at the top of his head, down to there. We have another one spiking up here. Spikes back down this way, back up, back down, and then we bring them down to the side of his head and they get a bit smaller as we go down. So out to here, and of course his hair grows in this direction so there's not any spikes really sticking out here, there might be one at the bottom. So we're just bumping it down, across, down, kind of like steps of a stairs, like if you were drawing fingers or something. This comes out to there. And this one spikes out. And it goes back in towards his head. And then a small one spiking out just there. And then of course Tanjiro has a dark black pattern inside his head with red lines. So we'll do that now. So just an outline on this side. So we do another line there. Another line underneath. Like so, so like just an outline of these shapes, really. Like so, and this is going to spike up like that. So come up to a spike, back down and in towards his forehead there. So these are all black inside. This comes up to a spike, up to here, back in. This comes over here, back down. Into there. And we continue kind of like that. This one comes down to there. Spike down, spike back across. 
across to there, back this way again. So we're just suggesting the growth pattern of its hair, the way it's growing. So it's going around, coming out from his head around to the back this way. And then we bring it down this way, down to there, <coughs> like so. Right, that's that one. Then I think this is actually dark black in all the way into here. And then this one, this one grows a bit differently. So this one comes up, back in, towards that way. And then we bring it back again. red and then we have a spike here and then we have a red section here into his ear and then a couple on this part of his fringe here as well so this comes up a bit longer spikes down spikes up spikes back like so comes up So that's what gives Tanjiro and his scare, like a lot of his character, a lot of his, how do you, you know, define him as a character? It's his kind of hairstyle and then the scare that's here. So we'll do that now. Spike in there, straight down, kind of like Harry Potter. <laughs> At first, a lightning scare. And then this comes back the other way, back down. Kind of like those old speech bubbles that you see in, you know, comic books like Pow, Zap, that kind of thing. Something like that. So then, all right. So his arm, his hand, and his sword. Hey, so. Right, so we'll do a curved line for his arm coming across his face just here. And then this comes up to here. And then he's got a ripped part of his kimono that goes down like so. So this is going to come down like this. Down to here. So it's all these torn, tattered parts. You can do this many different ways. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You're just getting a curve with a spike, really. Like that. And then his arms are going to come up to his, his hand that's just across from his face, just up here. So, we'll draw where his wrist is, I guess. So we have a curved line just here. It'll help us get the direction. So there, just across from his nose, just about here. And then we have a curved line for the dark side of his kimono, just there. And then this is going to bump down like so to here. And then it's going to curve around his elbow and come down this direction. And it's going to go down and off the page. Just down here. If you had more room, you could join it up. Down here, if you wanted, you could do more tattered edges and just join it into his shoulder just down there. So the other side of his arm, so his elbow is bent here. So that's the top side of his arm, it's foreshortened because it's moving away from us. And then we have some bumps. So we have a bump for his sleeve just there. 
Maybe another small one just here. It's just for the bend of his arm. And then this line is going to come in towards his rip just here. And maybe we can see some more of his face just like that. Here's a full line just this way. Maybe another one going into his elbow. And one or two just there, showing the direction of his clothes. Okay, so his hand. Ba, ba, ba. So coming out just here. So he's he's grabbing his sword. He's holding it like this. You know, he's clenching it real hard. So we can just see the top of his knuckles of his fingers. So bring up the side of his hand just here. We will go diagonal this way. Bit of a curve on it. And then we go up and across like that. So this is the first knuckle that goes down. And then we bring it across. So we go up and down for the next finger. And we go up and down for the next one. And then his little finger just comes up and across like that. And it's gonna come down towards the sword. And then this side of his hand is going to curve back inside like so and come down towards that part of his sleeve just down here. You might have a knuckle line or two just here. Not too much though. Okay, so his hand is real small because it's far away. It's like behind his head. And so that's why it's it looks pretty small. Right, so the handle of that is gonna come out vertical out here. You can use a ruler if you wanted, or you could try and freehand it. So we're gonna to go to here. So we're gonna go. And then coming out this side here so and then the other side comes out here so we have the handle of it so we're gonna bring this up and around here curve line like so then we give it an edge like that and then we have a bit of the hilt that comes in just at his finger just here comes across then goes down back in towards his hand and he has another circle in there as well and there's some lines radiating so going kind of like the hands of a clock, just or the numbers of a clock, just going around like so. And then the hilt of his sword. So, sorry, the blade of his sword. We did the hilt. So the blade comes out just here. And then we have the part that connects it to the the handle. So it's got it's kind of like a box just here, back in like so. And this has a bit of an edge just down here. And then a curved line just on top of it. Just there. And then you can see a bit of the sword going in towards the flame but not that much, like a tiny little bit, because it's engulfed in the flames. So 
Just a real small bit of the sword. Maybe you could thicken up that line. You might have a fire line just here. So we'll add some of those fire lines now in a minute, but we'll do his kimono that's at the back first. We'll put all the squares on it and then we'll do those flames. So, so say, let's see. So we'll do, his, it's flowing behind him. So we have a curve line here. This comes down to another curve line down like that. And then this is going to come in this direction, like so. And it just goes in underneath his hair, just in here. And there's a bit more of it. It's under flames, he can't really see that much of it, but it comes out. and then comes back in that way. A lot of it is under fire, so we can't see that much of it. So that's another piece of his kimono. But there's all flames all over that, so we'll do that in a minute. So, to do his squares that are on him, we'll just draw the curves going vertical first. So we're gonna curve that way, like so. Next one. Curves down this way. And we actually have a fold right here, so that doesn't continue. So it goes. Because his shoulder's here, so this is like folding around his shoulder. So the next one will go from his earring. Down to there. And then this one to there. And one more just here, like so. This one is under fire, so we'll draw in that piece of fire. So it's like just spiking. Sort of line just here. That's like red inside, so if you wanted to rub out the kimono line, we did it first, you can. Okay, so now we're gonna do the horizontal, so the the box lines. So let's see, there's a big one here. So we're gonna go like so. This is going to continue this up this direction and in towards the rips of his clothes just there. There's another one of those just up here so it kind of bumps this way and then goes up. And then we'll keep that going up into his earring, just there. So these are like black and green boxes. So then he has another one coming from back here. So it's going to go. It's going to come into this section like so. And then he has. Actually, this is the next one. Is one, two. So I gotta count now. <laughs> there should be one, two, three, four. Gotta add just one more. So I'm gonna make his kimono longer, just that way. So then this is gonna go off the page. Sorry, I'm a stickler. And that means this comes longer that way. That means his kimono is just flowing off the off the page for me. So then we have another box just here. 
it goes in the middle of this one because because of this fold it messes up the symmetry of them so there's a fold here that means this box is different and it goes diagonal that way and this line is a bit thicker like so and I think there's another fold line like here I think yeah there is okay so the flames so we're gonna bring it out from his start coming out from his sword so we're gonna go spiking up and down like so and there's different colors inside as well and some like flowing off this way coming up and around spiking all the way up and down going all the way around his head back in So these will be mostly red and yellow and orange. A lot of the ones inside here are bright yellow, it looks like. So some more in here. here going up towards his face And as I said, there's some back here. So it like comes out from his hair. Here. Spikes down, spikes up. It's going to go up and around. Back of his head. Spiking up this way, spikes back in. Ba -ba -ba, around like so. Comes down to somewhere do we want a yellow spike there and that means this goes into here like so and that means this should come just a bit longer and then we can draw some of the green and some lines for the green and black boxes what we can see of them anyway not much just here maybe a plus sign one there, so that means this will come this way. And that will curve that way. Then maybe another line there. And a box in here. And maybe a little box here. Yeah. So that's there, curving around. Right, I think, I think we got it all. I think we did. Flames, yep. Okay, there we go. How to draw Tanjiro, Dance of the Fire God. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.